you support this school? Dominus Godis Cum, si queste sangue vedere se pute bluca. In il loto ebre, dici Jesus, dici Poli Suis, se lumi vestri proficienti e pincerni ardientes e magnicus vestris e possibilis omnibus expectantibus donne suo. Quando per l'Italia e l'Unici e Scutcum vedere e un saperno al festo e che vogliono egli. Di altri servizi di costum vedere i nomi e vedere i vigili di altri 
We'd like to say good morning to everyone and we welcome you on this Tuesday, August the 8th, here in the principal church of our society of St. Alphonsus Marie de Liguari, St. Peter and Paul traditional Catholics. To those of you that are here with us in the sanctuary on this feast of St. John and Mary Vianney, I want to say to all who are listening to us in the United States, this feast is celebrated today. However, in the 1955 Missal, it is celebrated on August the 9th, and tomorrow we will celebrate it again, St. John Mary Vianney. We also uh, celebrate uh, the feast today of uh, uh, St. Syracus Largus and um, Smargagus, these uh, martyrs who gave their lives for Christ. St. Uh, Syracus was a holy deacon of Rome under uh, the uh, Pope uh, Marcellus and uh, Marcellus. Let us pray for the intercession of these martyrs, especially for those of you that uh, suffer from eye problems, and we also pray for those who are diabolically possessed for their deliverance. And we pray for all priests today, for holy priests, because today and tomorrow I will speak on the priesthood. So since in the United States we celebrate St. John the Annie on August the 8th, but in the 1955 Missal, which we use here in our Christian church, it is August the 9th. So once again, in the United States, we celebrate the Feast of St. John Mary Vianney, confessor, but in the 1955 Missal, it is celebrated on August the 9th. So tomorrow we will celebrate the Mass again in his honor on this Wednesday, which will be August the 9th. So let us pray once again for these martyrs, uh, that God will give us grace to suffer for him, whether it be by blood or simply by persecution. I want to speak to all priests today and bishops. However, the sermon today is also for the priesthood of believers, every one of us in the body of Christ, but particularly for priests. I want to speak on a subject that is quite controversial to many, especially priests, modernist priests, liberal priests, and the subject is purity required in the priest to celebrate worthily. And I speak from our founder, St. Alphonsus Marie de Liguori, from the duty and dignities of the priesthood. We must needs confess, says the Holy Council of Trent, that no other work can be performed by a faithful so holy and divine as this tremendous mystery itself. Speaking of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, God himself could not enable man to perform a more sublime or sacred action than the celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There is nothing greater on this earth than the sacred Mass. Oh, how much more excellent than all the ancient sacrifices is our sacrifice at the altar. 
in which we immolate not an ox nor a lamb, but the very Son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the incarnate Word, incarnate in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Jews, says St. Peter of Cluny, had an ox, but the Christians had Jesus Christ. The sacrifice of the latter in the Old Testament as far transcends that of the former, as Christ is more excellent than an ox or a lamb. The same author, St. Peter of Cluny, adds that to servants a servile victim was suited, but for friends and children was reserved Jesus Christ, a victim that has delivered us from sin and eternal death by his death on the cross. Justly then, says St. Lawrence Justinian, that there is no greater an oblation, more profitable to us, or more pleasing to Almighty God than the offering that is made in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. According to St. John Chrysostom, whose relic we have here in this altar, he says that during the celebration of Mass, the altar is surrounded by angels. And I know that to be so. Because I sense the presence of God and the celestial and terrestrial beings around the altar of the Lord. These angels surround the altar. And they are present day and night to pay homage to Jesus Christ, the victim offered in sacrifice. And St. Gregory asks, and I quote, Who doubts that at the very hour of immolation, at the voice of the priest, the heavens are open and the choirs of angels are present at the mystery of Jesus St. Augustine says that the angels assist the priest as servants who offers the sacrifice. Now the sacred council of Trent teaches that Jesus Christ himself was the first that offered this great sacrifice of his body and blood and that he now offers himself by the hands of the priest Note, I said he offers himself by the hands of the priest chosen to be his minister and representative on the altar. The priest, when he is ordained, his hands are anointed. St. Cyprian says that the priest truly holds the place of Christ in the person of Christ, ex persona Christus, and that therefore at the consecration, the priest says, this is my body. This is the chalice of my blood. To his disciples, Jesus himself said, he that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despised you, despised me, as recorded in St. Luke 10 and 16. You see, the priests of the Old Testament, the priests of the Old Law, the Lord commanded them, listen, to be clean. Merely because it was their duty to carry the sacred vessel. That is why nuns and sacristans 
11, it says, Be holy, ye that carry the vessels of the Lord. You touch them. Look into your conscience. You will not escape the wrath of God for the many times you have handled the sacred vessels. How much more clean we as believers and Christians must be. For we are the priesthood of believers. St. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your rational worship. We as called as Christians, every believer baptized in the mystical body of Christ, are priests in their own right. They offer up prayers. They pray with the priests in the holy sacrifice. So you sit here all asleep, not paying attention, not with it, mind somewhere else, unclean, impure, and you receive the precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. You too, as lay people, are called to be clean, to be holy. For the Beatitude says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity. How much more clean should they be who carry Christ in their hands? and in their body. How much greater purity shall God demand from the priests of the new law who must represent the person of Jesus Christ on the altar in offering to the eternal Father his own very son. Justly, my sons and daughters, does the council of Trent require that priests celebrate the sacrifice with the greatest possible purity. Purity of the conscience. It is also sufficiently clear that all industry and diligence are to be applied to this end. That it be performed with the greatest possible inward cleanness and purity of heart. Do you come to mass in mortal sin? Does sin reign in your souls? Are you in the presence of God in mortal sin? Have you confessed? Are you prepared to receive the precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ in a pure heart who has not lifted up the soul to vanity? nor sworn deceitfully by lying. It is but just that priests should honor God by innocence of life, since he has honored them so much above others. God chose men outside of men. God chose men from the congregation. He chose these human beings Call them from sin to righteousness. That's why our Lord said to Nicodemus in John 3, you must be born again. For flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You must be changed. We must be clean. We must be pure. And we should work out our salvation in that way. Asking God every day to help us to overcome the vicissitudes of life. To help us to overcome our faults, failures. And to repent of our sins and wrongdoings. And do penance and amend our lives. 
Every priest must be holy. He must have an innocent life. Since he has honored them so much above others. By making them the ministers of the altar. By making them the ministers of the great mystery of salvation. St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscans, says, and I quote, Behold, O priest, says St. Francis, your dignity, your dignity. That is why I don't understand how a man goes to the seminary and for eight years is formed. And then he enters with another agenda. So many young men have entered as homosexuals. So many men have entered with the problem of pornography and masturbation. So many are unclean. They desire to be something that they should not be. For many are called, but few are chosen. God calls a man from among men. And he calls them to be his ministers, to minister at the altar. This is a great mystery. Behold, O priests, your dignity as the Lord has honored you on the account of this mystery. So be careful on your part to love and to honor him. But the question is, how shall a priest honor God? First of all, listen, men are imperfect. We are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Through baptism, original sin is erased, and God empties into us actual grace. We must ask God to help us as human beings, as priests, to enter into the Holy of Holies in perfection. No man is perfect when he comes to the priesthood. God calls sinners who are ultimately changed. They come in as a seed and become a sacrament. They come in with many faults and failures. And through their formation, they are transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost to be sacred ministers and to labor in holy works. Now I want to move to the next part of this sermon. How great is the crime of the priest that celebrates mass in mortal sin? But does the priest that celebrates in mortal sin give honor to God? As far as regards himself, do you know what a priest does? He treats the Lord with the greatest dishonor that can be offered to him by displeasing him in his own person. For by his sacrilege, he appears as far as in him lies to defile the immaculate lamb. He comes to the altar. And he defiles the immaculate man whom he immolates in the consecrated host. To you, O priest, says the Lord, by the prophet Malachi, Malachi. In Malachi chapter 1, the Lord says to the prophet, Who despise my name, O priest? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, wherein have we polluted thee? We says St. Jerome in his comment on this passage of scripture, we pollute the bread that is the body of Christ when we unworthily approach the altar. We pollute the church of God when we pollute the altar. Lay person you pollute and give scandal to the church when you sin against God and do not repent. Bishops and priests, we pollute the house of God by sins 
Some of these bishops and priests are given into homosexuality. They are abusing children. They are sinners. They despise Christ. And they come to the altar polluting his altar. Bringing scandal in the Holy Church. Some have women, men that they sleep with. They are immoral. They do scandalous things. They come and approach the altar unworthy. God cannot raise a man to a greater elevation than by conferring on him the starch of noble dignity and the dignity of the priesthood. St. John the Annie was a holy man, a simple man. He didn't know the Latin very well, but he studied and studied and studied until he died. How many selections must the Lord have made in calling a person to the priesthood? Well, he selected St. John Vianney, and he had his faults and failures, but he perfected himself. The reading says today that he could have transgressed, but he did not transgress. He could have sinned, but he refused to sin. You and I don't have to sin. As bishops and priests, we don't have to sin. So many of you are sinners. God selected us from a countless number of possible creatures that he could have chosen. He must then separate him from so many millions of pagans and heretics and systematics. And lastly, he must make choice of him from the immense multitude of people. And what power does God confer on this priest, on this human, on this man? If the Lord bestowed only on one man the power of falling down by his words, the Son of God from heaven, how great should be his obligation and his gratitude to the Lord. This power grants to every priest lifting up the poor out of the dung hill, that he may place him with princes and with the princes of his people. The number of persons whom God has given this power does not diminish the dignity or the obligations of the priesthood. But what does the priest do? What does the priest do that celebrates mass in the state of sin? A priest should not celebrate the Mass in the state of sin. We too must confess. He dishonors and despises the Lord by declaring that so great a sacrifice is not deserving of the reverence which would make him the dread, the sacrilegious oblation of it. Says Saint Cyril, my sons and daughters, I fear the priesthood. If I'm not going to be serious about my life, then I ought not to be here at the altar. Because it is an abomination for any priest who is unclean and immoral. Stand at the holy altar of the Lord. You wonder why the Second Vatican Council took out the prayers of the priest before Mass. So many things change. Because the priest must offer Mass every day, if possible. So many of them don't offer Mass because they know their lifestyle. They know that many of them are in sin. 
and their bodies and minds and hearts are not made conformable to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must pray for priests. Pray for those wayward ones. They will come to repentance and amend their lives and do their such or those duties in holiness and purity of heart. You see, my sons and daughters, the hand says, St. John Chrysostom, that touches the sacred flesh of Jesus Christ and the tongue that is purple with his divine blood should be purer than the rays of the sun. In another place he says that the priest that ascends the altar should be possessed of purity and sanctity which would merit for him a place in the midst of the angels. That is why a deacon who is ordained and the next step become a priest should not come to this altar in mortal sin because it offends God. In another place he says, a man that is a priest ascending the altar along with a deacon or deacons, subdeacons, deacons, should be possessed of purity and sanctity, possessed, I say. And you as lay persons, nuns and sisters, ought to be possessed with purity and holiness. For you surround the altar of God. Oh, how many of you are Even touch the brain. 
great fire of the past and put it on a black knowing that my heart is not right with God. Still more wicked is the priest that celebrates mass with a soul defiled by mortal sins. Even the sacristans and the deacons and subdeacons and the religious must be holy because they all are around the altar dealing with holy things, touching them, handling them. Do you see what happens? God turns his eyes away that he may not hold such horrible impiety. When says the Lord, you stretch forth your hands, you pray, he says, I will turn away my eyes, for your hands are full of blood. How can a deacon touch the black? How can the deacon prepare the black for the priest to offer the sacrifice? How can nuns and sacristans altar service touch the pattern for the bread? Those who celebrate in the state of sin. 
by their abominations. Her priests have defiled my sanctuaries. Malachi 2 and 3. And I was profane in the midst of them. Alas, the Lord is placed in very dark clear who the Carthusian. How does it happen that some of those that hold a high place in your church are the first that persecute? Because we just don't do right, we're disobedient and defiant. We persecute the Lord more. And we declare more abominations because of our so called sanctity and piety that God loathes and hates. This is indeed true, as St. Cyprian says, that a priest who celebrates Mass in the state of sin insults. With his mouth and hands, the very body and blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. That the priest who pronounces the words of consecration in the state of sin, do you know what he does? He spits at Christ. The priest who pronounces the words of consecration in the state of sin, Fits, as it were, in the face of Jesus Christ. And when he receives the most holy sacrament into his unhallowed mouth, he, as it were, casts the body and blood of Jesus Christ into the mire. A few moments you will come and receive in that, many of you, your pride and your arrogance in that unhallowed mouth. That tongue that curses, lies, and swears, you will receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity into that mind you cast out. But why do I say that he cast Jesus Christ into the mind? The soul of a priest in sin is worse than poop, is worse than mire. And the martyr is not so unworthy of receiving the divine flesh as the heart of a sacrilegious priest. The sacrilegious priest and even deacon that's preparing for the priesthood, that stands at the altar, says St. Vincent Ferrer, is guilty of greater impiety than if he cast the most holy sacrament into a saint. Such too is the doctrine of St. Thomas of Illinois. The sins of a priest are always most grievous on account of the injury that they do to God, who has chosen him for his ministry and has heaped so many favors upon him. My sons and daughters, take this serious today. That's why I'm preaching on the priesthood. It is one thing, says St. Peter Damien, to violate the laws of a sovereign and to another to strike him with your own hands. This is what a priest does when he stands at the altar in mortal sin. He commits a sacrilege. He sacks God. It is one thing, my sons and daughters, to transgress edicts which a president, a king, or pope has propagated, and another to wound him with our own hands. No one sins more grievously than a priest that offers sacrifice unworthily. When we sin in any other way, we as it were, we injure God in his property. God owns all this. But when we unworthily offer sacrifice, we dare to lay my hands upon his person. 
previously that the Jews who crucified him when he was on earth. The Jews did not know Jesus Christ the Redeemer as we do. We know Christ. Besides, as Tertullian says, the Jews laid hands on Jesus Christ only once. But the sacrilegious priests dare frequently to repeat the injurious treatment because he handles every day. That's why the Vatican II priests, they don't want to offer Mass every day. And some of you traditionalist priests, you are lying wonders. Many of you don't offer Mass daily. Some of you don't offer Mass in your oratories. Woe be to you, priest. Then why are you ordained a priest? Why are you consecrated a bishop? So many of the bishops and priests do not have congregations, do not have do not have places to bring the faithful to worship. And you call yourselves priests. Priests of what? Bishops of what? Bishops of none, priests of none. God called the priest to go, he therefore, into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing every preacher in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, know I will do always even until the end of the ages, and to offer the holy sacrifice. It is necessary that a bishop and priest serves the people to offer the sacrifice daily. And that will keep you holy because you daily stand in the presence of God. I love celebrating Mass. I have people ask me, how do you do it? The love of Christ makes me do it. That's what St. Vincent Pilate said, and it was his thing. The love of Christ urges me on. When you love someone, you do it from the heart, even when you're tired and weak, you still do it. It is necessary, my sons and daughters, that according to the doctrine of theologians, a priest by the sacrilegious celebration of Mass is guilty of four mortal sins. And I'm going to end here today. The first being because he consecrates in the state of sin. Lay person, sister, nun, subdeacon, deacon, those in minor orders, major orders, sacristans, do you offer yourself to God in a state of sin? Secondly, because this priest communicates in the state of sin, do you receive the body of Christ in the state of sin? Thirdly, because he administers the sacrament in the state of sin. And fourth, because he administers it to an unworthy person, that is to himself first. And then there are people that come to the altar that are indeed unworthy and receive in an unworthy manner. This may say to your own foam. Foam from the mouth. To zeal against the deacon, Sabina. Sabidian, he says, he called him, he called that deacon, you miserable wretch. And so many are miserable wretches. We've been in 
gracias a darnos donde o que é nosso
He had to serve this queen. When they left the Jews, when they left the fish, he had to. And then he would want to see what all he had done, see what constitutes the age.
got to where she was engaged in the first time here. And we got to do a several days sponsor as we got to cross the streets, catch a bottle, and only the sign across the road for Mercy Arthur, and going to the doctor's 